Hello everyone, Kevil here once again, bringing you level 7 on Windows 7. Got my new computer, fixing everything up, but uh, the audio might sound a bit differently, but everything else should be the same. I will still be able to record X7. I uh, tried a few things to get that to work on the new system. Didn't quite go as planned, but I eventually fixed it using uh, VirtualBox software. Basically, I'm running Windows XP on Windows 7 whenever I'm recording that. I'm not sure how my recording program will like that, but hopefully it will. And if it doesn't, I do still have the old computer that I can work from. It just won't be as convenient at all. It took me weeks to get all of the data transferred over. Uh, I don't have a an external hard drive because I've never really found a use for one. I don't have that many files, just about, uh, like, I think right now 30 gigabytes or so of uh, video files that I've got saved, and that's just about it. So, getting an external hard drive, not really necessary for me at this point, not really in my budget. So instead I used a 4 gigabyte flash drive to transfer all of my data because I'm a silly face. It worked, and it just took longer, so that's that. Uh, everything else just about the same. And, well, there's that over there. So, yeah, we're playing good old Kirby. And this should be the last video, unless it ends up taking more than half an hour to kill this guy. In which case, I might split it into two. Uh, last boss might take longer than, uh, well, it's the last boss. It's got, like, four phases. Also, since this is level seven, the designers really put a lot of into these levels. They even have some very odd things, which we'll see later, including a throwback to the first Kirby game, which is really silly because this is the second Kirby game. I don't know why they did that, but they did that. And let's see if I'm any better at this. Hey, apparently I am. Not bad. Final bit of news from my end, I might be getting a new controller soon. My current one, it still works. I've got no complaints about it. I love the design. It's an Xbox 360 controller. It's comfortable. It's easy to use. But it's starting to short out on me. The light doesn't come on anymore at all. And occasionally, it'll just stop working. It hasn't done that while recording yet, which is good. But I'd hate to have a perfect run ruined because my controller breaks. Eh, we'll find that out when it happens, though. So far, so good. If I do end up getting a new one, I'm not sure if I should get the same old controller that I've had before, or if I should get, uh, like a Logitech gamepad or something similar. If anyone has any recommendations, feel free to post them. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Although, I must say, nothing from the PlayStation line of controllers, even if it has a USB attachment, because I do not like the PlayStation controller design. It, the design itself is fine, it's just... I just... They're not comfortable to me. I just can't find myself gripping a PlayStation controller and enjoying it. It's nothing wrong with the systems or the controllers themselves. Just not, uh, not comfortable for me. And that makes X7 even harder, because guess what console I'm playing that on? Oh, as if you didn't want to give me more things to complain about. Thank you, Capcom. Oh, come on now, Bugsy. I gotta hit you. Bonkers. Sorry, you're not Bugsy. You're bonkers. What do I think you're Bugsy? If you couldn't tell by now, this is a boss rush. There's lots of bosses and you're rushing through them. It's kind of like Mega Man, except not quite. Especially in the sense that, uh... Well, these ones are a lot easier. You don't have any health refills in between, which is... Makes it actually pretty difficult, especially when you're incompetent like I am. Alright, that's it. No more Mr. Nice, Kevil. Launch things at me. Whoa. Cool, I didn't know that didn't hurt you. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. And now I have the throw power up, so everything will die. I guess Mega Man and Kirby are pretty similar, though. They both copy enemy powers, although Kirby's is a bit more temporary. They're both... tiny, especially compared to all of their opponents. But that's most video games, so I guess that's alright. And they both shoot things. Although, Mega Man's a lot better at it. And this is a giant ladybug, or beetle. I think it's actually supposed to be a Hercules beetle, like, uh, say... 
Boomer Kawanger or Gravity Beetle is, but it always looked like a ladybug to me, especially since it launches little ladybug type things at you. And this thing, which is still just the weirdest and most obscure boss. It, it's not exactly a rare boss, but I never really remember that it exists, so yeah. It's there, Mr. Kitty Cat. Also very easy to kill if you just simply float up and then let him jump at you. He'll die pretty easily. And I think that's the entire level, or is that just that particular area? I don't remember. I probably should have gone through and practiced these beforehand, but they're not too difficult, so why bother? Ah, yes, we're moving into a very psychedelic, cool-looking area. Most of level 7 is like this. Also, one single normal enemy. I don't know what the point of that was. Okay, then. But I guess that's that. And level 3. Most of level 7 is just, like, fancy ideas they had that were just thrown together. I like it, but it's just odd. It's kind of like how level 4 was just odd. No continuity. Although the levels look pretty, so I guess that counts for something. It shows that we are in dreamland. Everything is night, and there are naughties everywhere, and they're sleeping, so, you know. Dreamland. It works. It makes sense. And this room, which is really hard to navigate. It's all ice, there's lots of corners. If you got the laser beam, yeah, you're fine, but otherwise, it's really, really odd. Plus the Sir Kibbles, which are perpetually annoying. But I'm good. And Meta Knight is here, even though we killed him last time, but, uh, he's back and still helping us. We'll never have to fight him or his minions again, but, uh, he'll still throw lollipops at us. Maybe they're supposed to be poison, and he's trying to kill us, but Kirby just absorbs the poison and turns it into superpowers or something. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. Meta Knight's a bizarre character. I think he's ultimately a good guy, but he has a weird way of showing it, and also likes to try and take over Dreamland. Maybe... Maybe he's protecting Dreamland, but only because he knows that he'd rather take it over. So he's like, he's like a hero, but only in the strictest sense. Whereas if, if it weren't for the Nightmare, he'd probably be fighting Kirby. But since the evil demon monsters who are trying to destroy everything are here, he's saving the world. I don't know. No one has motivation in this game. It's very odd. Kirby doesn't make sense. It's a, it's a kid's game. It should be simple. It's not. Or maybe I'm just overthinking things. That's probably the case. Also, one of my favorite series of rooms. I don't know why. It's just interesting that they have a room dedicated to enemies that don't matter. <laughs> it's just so silly and pointless. We got some Bronto Burts here and fancy thingamajigs. I think there, there's later a room, might just be in my imagination, where they have actual enemies that have power-ups in them. There they are! Meteors! That close enough. Fireball. Except I can't destroy them properly. There we go. They're dead. And this room, which is visually painful, and it also seems to be hurting the emulator, too, because I seem to be experiencing some slowdown with how fancy this level looks. It's amazing they were to put this much processing power on an NES game. It really is. And I got a three, and it's okay, I guess. Been noticing a severe lack of secret exits, or secrets in general, but the next level has a fancy one, so that'll be good. Also, bombs everywhere, oh my goodness. Except that for the most part, you can simply rush forward and be fine. Except for that last one, you do have to kill that one. And I prefer to take it for the mini-boss. Note the wheelie on the bottom. He's just got a little space to himself, rushing back and forth. Probably doesn't mean to hurt anyone, probably didn't expect to get hurt, but uh, then Kirby came. And ruined his life. Poor guy. He's dead now, so it's okay. These stars, if you couldn't tell, affect gravity greatly. And if you're using the meteor power-up, it's actually pretty easy to just, like, fly on the top as you'll go up and down, back and forth, and not really have to worry about anything. Carefully grabbing that wheelie, and I definitely want the health up there, because I'm kind of low on that. <laughs> health is a good thing. It 
is required. Kill that thing. And now a pretty tricky maneuver because we don't have much time to do this. Oh, failure. Let's try again. You have to be incredibly speedy to get through this part safely. Oh, nope, not quite. One more time. And rush one more time. Got it! It's a close shave, but oh, the reward. Five one-ups. And no secrets. No secret exit, just one-ups. Eh, I guess that's fine. Technically, secret exits only give you things like museums and power-ups anyway, so why not? Better to have a guaranteed five than a possibility of three, I say. And now we move on to the final level in the game. And it is probably one of the best. It's completely vanilla. There are no enemies that give you power-ups. The music is only found in this game, and it's fully in black and white. You know why? Because this is a tribute to the first Kirby game, which doesn't really make too much sense because, as I may have mentioned before, the first Kirby game was just one before this one. It's weird that Hal decided to put retro in a game that came out in 1993. It's bizarre if you think about it. I mean, this was nostalgia before nostalgia became such a big thing like it is now. Like these days, everyone's all about the retro. Like Mega Man 9 and 10 coming out for the Wii and all the games that are coming out for the Virtual Console and all that thing. It's all about retro. It's all about going back and basically capitalizing on people's memories of playing games when they were a kid. And yet, this is a game that we played when we were a kid, or would have played when you were a kid. And yet, it's going back to a game that you would have played when you were a younger kid. I never even had played the original Kirby game when I first played this level, and it still made me nostalgic somehow. I don't know how. A nostalgic seven-year-old. It's, it's a very bizarre concept, but that's how it works. Oh right, explosions hurt. I should remember those things. I, I'm not entirely sure, because I'm not super familiar with Kirby's Dream Land, but I believe that every room in this particular stage is sort of a callback to one of the levels from the original Kirby's Dream Land for the Game Boy. At least it seems that way. I mean, we've got the... It could just be representing every level from this game, but I'm not so sure on that, because it's not in a very good order. I'll have to do some research on that and probably get back to y'all on that. Probably explain it in the description if I am so inclined. But yes, this this level is just beautiful. I, I love it. This level makes me happy. Also, the secret in here is kind of obscure. The moon is apparently a door now. And we can fill up our health, get one final one up, and hit the switch. Although hitting the switch fills up your health anyway, so I don't know what the point of that is. Oh well. Eh, a three for my last hurrah. Not bad. And now it is time for the final boss. It's time to fight King DDD himself, who has pretty much caused this whole mess from the beginning. If this video turns out to be extremely long, I might be cutting it off here. So, until next time, this is Kevil, signing off. Ciao!